Hello entrepreneurs and thank you for joining another session of HNB Tech Webinars Project. Thank you our sponsors and supporters Misty, MIT Israel, Mobixon, Beertech, y the YAC Young Adult Center in Haifa and BIG in Boston. Uh, today we have Talia Wolf from Conversioner. We're going to talk about uh, mobile optimization and landi landing pages optimization. Uh, Talia is the CEO of Conversioner, and uh, that's it. Uh, let's enjoy it. Thank you, Talia. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Sure. Um, so, um, as you said, we're going to be talking today about conversion optimization, and I am going to kind of do a drill down of the basics of landing pages. Um, we're going to talk a bit about um, the basic of a landing page, what it's built from, and what are the five most important elements of it. Um, so I'll start by uh, introducing myself. Um, so I'm Talia, I'm the founder and CEO of Conversioner. Um, on the left hand side you can see what I really do, which is skydiving. Um, and you may have seen some of my posts on Forbes or Kissmetrics, Unbounce, Business Insider and others. Um, feel free to kind of tweet to me at any time and ask me any questions. Um, I'm very happy to tweet to everyone. And you, of course, you can also reach out to my email, which is talia at conversioner.com. Um, so to start off, we'll talk a bit about some numbers. So um, companies typically spend about $92 to bring customers to their site. Um, but what's interesting is they only spend about $1 to convert them. So you put in a lot of effort and time into bringing traffic to your website, but what actually happens to it once they click on your ads and what happens when they actually get to the site. Um, so today, as I said, we're gonna be talking about landing pages and this is kind of a structure of a landing page. And the landing page is where people land on. So if you have an ad and someone clicks on it or if someone's searching for you on Google and they click on any type of link, wherever they land on, that is their landing page and that's where they start their whole user journey with you guys. And at the end of the day, there's a lot you can do in order to optimize that type of um, structure and what happens to customers once they land on your page. Because the first three seconds and the first few seconds that a person lands on your website or your landing page are gonna make the biggest impact and they're gonna decide if this person is going to continue with you and become a customer or bounce. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the five elements. So one of them is also, is of course, the call to action. Then we'll be talking about the messaging of a landing page. We'll be talking about the images and how to actually create a good image for your landing page, the colors and what um, impact they have on you. And we're gonna be talking about the entire funnel. So what does it look like from the second a person clicks on an ad to um, landing on your landing page and the connection between the two? And we're also gonna be talking about how to test landing pages, and we'll get to that soon. So to start out, we're gonna be talking about call to action buttons, and that's basically one of the most important elements of a landing page, and it's where people click on. So call to action buttons are supposed to be the first natural thing a person looks at when they land on your landing page. It needs to be bigger, it needs to be bold, um, and let's just talk about a few of the stuff. So. Um, one of the things that it needs to be is above the fold. Now, what this means regarding the above the fold is that you don't want people to be scrolling in order to create an action on your landing page. So you can see I've actually used Microsoft's landing page um, and I've kind of um, put a red box around it to show you where the fold is. So the bottom red line is where people, this is what people see when they land on it. And anything below that red line, they have to scroll in order to see. So all the call to actions for buying this specific uh, product of Microsoft require people to actually scroll down in order to buy them and in order to actually use them. So obviously they do have a shop now button above the fold, but uh, if you wanna get people to actually only perform one action and save them the time from clicking on a, a few times, you wanna have the call to action above the fold as much as possible. You also want to make sure that you only have one call to actions. So if you look at Salesforce's landing page, um, it has three different um, call to actions. So 
what exactly do they want me to do? Do they want me to view a demo? Do they want me to try a free trial? Or do they want me to see their solutions? And if you um, also look on the left, you'll see they have a link to learn more. So at the end of the day, one of the things that you'll notice is that we see a lot of messaging during the day. We see hundreds of people telling us what to do on tons of websites. Um, and we get muddled up and we're not really sure what to click on. So our customers, our visitors need our help and we need to be, we need to tell them what to do, what to click on. So having one call to action tells them exactly what you want them to do and how to do it. Other than that, we want to talk a bit about the position and its color. So as I said, you want the call to action to be the first natural place a customer looks at, a visitor looks at. So it needs to be prominent, it needs to be in the middle, and it needs to have um, you know, one specific color that is basically kind of contrast to... As I said, you want to make sure that the call to action button is the first natural place a person looks at. So you want to make sure that it's centered, that it's got a contrast color, meaning it can be seen and it's not hidden within all the design of the landing page. One other thing you'll notice in this landing page is that we've placed all the elements around the call to action button. So it's positioned, basically all the items around it are kind of making you look into that direction. So the call to action button run is the center of focus. It's in a contrast color, it's green as opposed to the blue landing page and it has all the elements around it to support it and show that this is the right place to look at. This is also a good um, look at a, a call to action button because you can see that the landing page itself is gray and blues but the call to action button is in yellow. So the first thing you look at is the call to action button telling you to start trading. A bad example will probably be this landing page. So um, the, the landing page is green, but all the call to action buttons are green. So other than the fact that they have too many call to action buttons, which is what is a Bitcoin, how to buy Bitcoins, how to sell Bitcoins, open an account, login, you've got many kind of call to actions, but also you can't actually see them because they're green. So obviously you can't really find them or click on them. We're also going to be talking a bit about the messaging. So what does it say? What do you want to write on your actual um, call to action button? So it needs to be short and to the point. It needs to be action oriented and it needs to be clear and easy to understand. So you want to make sure that people really get what you're offering. So it doesn't have to be an entire sentence. It should usually be in between two to three words and it needs to be to the point. So you can see that um, Unbounce here has been using their call to action to basically say, you know, get my free but free ebook now. So it's get, you know, it's action oriented because it's telling you to get something. It's shortened to the point and it's very easy to understand that when you click on it, you're going to get an ebook. This is another thing um, that's important about messaging in general of a landing page. So it's not just the call to action. You'll notice here that what Shutterstock is talking about is the 30 million images that they have on their landing on their product. So this is something that a lot of companies do today. They talk about themselves. They talk about how they are the number one solution. They have the most. They are the best. They are the cheapest. They have better features and on and on. And they talk about how they are better than others, which is okay, but it's not really talking to the customer because what people actually care about as customers they care about themselves and they care about what's in it for them so when you're talking about the messaging that's in on your landing page you want to make sure that you're addressing your customers emotional sense Manpacks actually has a really good example they could actually write you know the best underwear and socks and shaving essentials if they wanted to as a title but instead they tell you how your life is going to change by using their product so it's your morning ritual refined. By using this product, your entire morning rituals, everything you do in the morning is going to change. And it's a much better promise than 30 million images. I have a question, if I may. Yeah. Uh, we just saw two examples of landing pages, one without people, you know, and, and, and very big images. This one has a face, for instance, and the other one have, had nothing. This one. Um, yeah. yeah, this one, for instance. Although this one has a lot of uh, text in it, yeah. But what would you prefer, like an uh, like cl clean thing with a nice and good contrast, uh, w with less words, 
or something that with with a model in it that you know explain like the the vibe of so the we're actually going to get to that in a few minutes okay. but the most important thing to remember is that our brains are geared towards visual so the first thing we see is anywhere is the visual is the colors and the emotion that we get from it so when you have landing pages like shutterstock you're as you said there's a ton of text so that's what you're overwhelmed with when you click on this landing page the first thing you see is the sky and it gives you a sense of impact so obviously the images have a very big impact on your landing page and you want to pay a lot of attention to them okay And here we are. So our brains process images 60,000 times quicker than text. And 90% of the information transmitted to our brain is visual. So for example, um, this is one of the most well-known heat maps um, examples. So this is on the left-hand side, you can see what happened when they had the baby kind of staring towards the user. And you can see a heat map basically shows what people are looking at and where they're clicking. So most of the people were clicking on the baby's face. And then the second part that they did was on the right hand side when the baby's looking at the text and you can see that all the clicks have moved to the right so you can use an image to focus the the visitor's attention to a specific element and you can do that with the design so if we take a look at whistle for example you were asking about the image so you have a powerful image and the dog is the first thing you see so they have too many call to action buttons in my opinion but The, the one thing that they do do is they use the dog to center your focus towards the call to action button. So the first thing you look at is the dog's nose and it kind of focuses you towards the call to action button. Like arrow. Yeah, exactly, just like an arrow. Um, and it's a really good use of images. Um, another way to do that is by using elements around the call to action. So we saw it on one of the landing pages I was showing before when you basically place a ton of images around the call to action. So the first thing you look at is that center because there's so much going on there and you have those images. And obviously the call to action here is in contrast. It's got a, um, a glaring yellow color, so it is the first thing you look at. Um, this is a landing page that we did for a dating site. Um, and you'll notice that one of the things that we did is we had all the people um, in the images kind of looking towards the call to action. So the main woman who's actually, you know, the main feature you look at on the right hand side, she's definitely looking towards the call to action button. And she doesn't have to point towards it as an arrow like the dog. She can just kind of tilt her head and smile towards it. And it already gives you the kind of... Um, In immediate kind of look towards the call to action button and you've got so much going on here and you have two call to actions you have the sign in and find my match and you have tons of images around here but still the first thing that you look at is the um, is the call to action button so you can use images in a very good way um, this is actually my favorite um, landing page because um, it's for a charity and it's charity water so they're trying to get more water and to clean water up for African uh, children and to Africans in general um, and one of the things that always happens with donation sites is they always try to make you feel bad so if you look on the um, on ads on the internet or even on TV you always see these sad kids and it really makes you feel bad about yourself but to be honest people you know, When we donate money, we say that we're donating because we want to be good people, we want to help out, but we donate because we want to feel good about ourselves. And when you see a picture like this of a kid who's drinking and smiling, it really gives you the idea, okay, if I donate money, I'm going to make this person feel this way and all the African kids are going to be happy and shiny and smiley and everything's going to be amazing. And it, you know, donating is about yourself at the end of the day. You tell yourself it's not, but it is. It's about the feeling you get back. So they're doing an amazing job here by using this kid who's smiling and happy. And she's also looking at the call to action. So they've done a really nice kind of strategy here about kind of getting you to feel good about your donation and also getting her to look towards the call to action button. Also, they have here the price already. Like it's already already there. You, you don't have to decide. They already made the decision for you. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really like. And it's really connected to what I was talking about before that we have too many options and in psychology you have something called analysis paralysis so if you have too many options our default is not to choose and then one of the good things to do is to choose for the customer not just by giving them one call to action but by also telling them okay you're going to donate forty dollars that's what you're going to be doing or you're going to click here and you're going to get this plan because when you help people they tend to take an actual action 
but if you're giving them too many options, they close up and they prefer to not choose. So um, I started by saying that one of the most important things is the funnel itself. So what happens when a person clicks on an ad and this is a media ad that says, you know, the best investment decision I've ever made and it's kind of like a banner yeah. uh, that you a see. Maybe. Um, but then what happens is you click on the banner and you get to a landing page. So you want to be, you want to make sure that the messaging that you have on the banner is actually correlated to the message on the landing page. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about, I want to get more traffic. So you could, you know, write uh, free donuts to anyone who clicks. I mean, that, you know, that's a good way to get up um, conversion rates. So you can put on, you know, half naked women there and get people to, to click on it. But if a person clicks on an ad and gets to a landing page that doesn't, basically um, you know give the promise of what he clicked on they're gonna bounce so your bounce rate will go up and you'll get less conversions um, so it's really important to make sure that your messaging even if it's not a banner if it's just an ad on Facebook or if it's an ad on Google AdWords you want to make sure that the messaging um, is continuous and people can get you know expect to see what they have expected on the landing page So the next thing I, I want to talk about is actual colors. So colors have a huge emotional power on us. Um, and you can see we've created this um, design um, to show you a bit of how colors make changes. And we'll look at a few case studies in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but you can see that green, for example, is, is associated with hope and growth and freshness. And red is associated with energy and passion and action. And that's why you'll also see a lot of um, food companies using the red color because it associates with kind of taking the next ash action and quickly. Um, this is from the logo company and I really like um, this design because it shows you how companies have been using the diversity of colors to kind of give you different emotions. So for example, um, you know, companies like Dell and HP um, and IBM and um, you know, uh, Pfizer want to make you feel trustworthy. They want you to feel that you can trust them and that everything's okay and going to be fun and, you know, and trustworthy. So they use the colors of blue. And companies like Fanta and uh, Hooters, <laughs> for example, and Amazon want to make you feel cheerful and friendly and fun. So they use the orange colors. And it's, it's really cool to see how companies use the colors. And then you can also see how some companies were not able to decide. So they just used a few, like Google, NBC, eBay, uh, Microsoft and stuff. They just used a bunch of different colors. Um, but also um, you can see a lot of food chains using the colors of yellow, orange, and red, like McDonald's, um, who use those colors, and Subway, um, to give you the idea of optimism, we're friendly, everything's fun and exciting and great, and wow, eat all our food and get fat. So that's kind of a, the, the direction that they go. Um, so just to give you a few more ideas, men prefer bright colors and women prefer soft colors. Um, so we call them milky colors here. Um, and men prefer shaded colors and women prefer more tinted colors. Um, again, these all need to be A-B tested. So I'm giving you like all these ideas and things of how you should use stuff, but nothing is a 100% for sure thing. It's all about testing and you want to make sure that you test these things to see what works better. And if we're talking about testing, then what do you test? Um, so um, when you do A-B testing, uh, the most common thing to do is to take a landing page, duplicate it, and just change an element. We were talking about this a little bit before. Um, so, for example, you take a call to action button and you have an orange one and a green one. And you see that the orange one won by 23%. Um, but as I was saying, the biggest issue with these type of tests is that you don't really know why they work. So why did the orange button win and what is the next step? And the most important thing in conversion optimization is being able to scale and learn and be able to take the test results and say, oh, I'm going to test the next thing. And now I'm going to go to this direction and continuously grow and optimize. Um, so this is why um, it's really important to test strategies. And this is one of uh, my favorite uh, images. 
um, that I found online and it, it basically talks about what is your product. So usually you'll ask companies what their product is and if they're selling shoes, they'll say, well, I sell shoes. Or you know, if you ask someone who sells bicycles, they'll say, I sell bicycles. Or I sell a great product that helps you create invitation cards or whatever. But that's not what you're selling. What you're actually selling is how a person feels. You're selling a better version of a person. So when someone buys something, um, they're not buying it because of their price or their features. They're buying it because they're buying a better version of themselves. They're buying it because it's going to make them feel cool. They're buying it because it's going to make them feel powerful or part of a community or loved. Or There's so many different emotional triggers. You're not buying it because it's you know, it has more, it's cheaper, or because it has a better sound than another boombox. It, you're basically buying it because yeah, of the emotion. Empower, empower you. Exactly. So that's why when you're testing, it really is important to test strategies, to understand what is that emotion and why do people buy your products? Are people buying your products because they want to feel something specific? Do they want to feel a few things? What is the reason? And again, it's not your features. It's about the emotion. So I'm going to show you a few case studies to give you an idea of how we do A-B testing at Conversioner and how, how we do our methodology, how we think about it, and why we test different things the way we do. So um, this is a landing page for a B2B company, um, and they do commission calculation solutions. So it's a kind of a you know, when you think of it, kind of a boring product, you know, not a very interesting one. And B2B companies don't tend to have a lot of traffic um, and their products are usually quite expensive um, and it's quite hard to get people to, to leave their leads and actually turn them into a, a paying customer. Um, and one of the things that I always get from B2B companies is that, well, you know, B2B purchases are not emotional at all, but, you know, they're for a company. But it's actually exactly the opposite because when you're buying for a company, whether you're the CEO or whether you're a manager within the company, there's a lot of pressure on you. There's pressure on you to uh, be um, a, to show your boss that you've chosen an amazing product, to find a, a solution that your com you know that your colleagues won't get pissed off with you that the fact that you're kind of bringing in a new product, and to actually bring a good product that will help you and make your life easier. And it's also it also costs money, and you have to go up to someone and say, listen, you know, let's spend this money. So th there's a lot of calculations that you need to make. Um, and that's why when we created um, our landing page, we went for that lead your team to success. So you'll notice that they said, we're the number one solution for commission calculation and no one cares. So we went for the lead your team to success because at the end of the day, the people who are buying these products are managers who are buying a product for their colleagues. So we did mention that they're the number one solution for commission calculation, but that's not the, the center of the thing. The center is the fact that you, by buying this product, you will lead your team to success. And you can also see the technical changes that we made. So obviously we added a better, we added an image um, to give you more emotion and we changed the whole kind of, um, registration form so from the right hand side with all sorts of things you need to fill in and, and a lot of text we changed it to something more easy and quick that looks easier to do um, and we saw a 98% increase in leads for that um, which was which was a lot of fun because again they don't have a lot of traffic this company because it's B2B not a lot of people search commission calculation solutions on Google um, so it's good to see that it's not just okay an increase in leads we didn't just you know open the sh you know the, the faucet and say oh okay let's just bring in leads but they were valuable leads because these leads understood the value in this product this is a b2c company and they do online invitations for your parties so basically if you're having a party for your child you would create the invitation card on their website um, the only problem is that to do this, you actually have to download the product, sign up, pay, and only then create the invitation. And the payment isn't a one-time payment, it's an ongoing payment. So you can either pay for a yearly subscription or a monthly subscription. So there's a, kind of, there's a lot of issues to deal with. Um, but in general, their landing page is a good landing page. It has a good contrast call to action. It has one call to action. It has happy people smiling there, um, and it tells you exactly what the product is. 
But when we did our research, we realized that most of the people who were using this product were parents, and they didn't care the, about the fact that they could do custom online invitations in minutes. What they cared about was the fact that this invitation is going to be, you know, that's going to show all their friends how the party's going to be, and it's going to be in their name, and people are going to judge them on this invitation card. And they're going to say, this invitation card is going to tell them if this party is going to be amazing or if it's going to suck. Um, so we created um, two different landing pages. So this was the first one uh, that we created and we kind of took the whole kind of cat image and we, instead of kind of saying it's free download now, we started with get started. And we had the uh, send fun birthday invitations and it's treat guests, set the party scene, stand out. And it's all about you and the outcome of your party. Um, and we saw a 42% increase in revenues. Um, so this is interesting. We saw a 12% increase in downloads, 18% um, increase in registrations, I think, but 42% increase in revenues. So the bottom line, which was what matters, actually saw the most increase. Um, this was another landing page that we created for them, and it's a completely different outlook of it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a birthday invitation at start now. You have the squirrel thing, a lot of balloons and parties. Um, and we saw 114% increase in revenues here. Um, and one other thing that we added here was the trusted by 15 million people um, to give the trust element to people, to show that other people are doing this. So within all this design and the colors that we used and the messaging, we were able to show people that using this product will make your life easier and cooler and people will think that your party is going to be amazing and fantastic and that they have to attend um, and that was what made the difference um, so this is a landing page for a company that does um, backups so it's a cloud uh, it scans your computer and it saves stuff for you so it's kind of a competitor to maybe Dropbox in some way um, and this was their original landing page um, and obviously we did um, our research and we found a few things. Um, so one of them was that the people that were, most people that were using this were either tech guys um, who were looking to save their stuff or parents who wanted to save their children's images and kind of work on their, um, you know, make sure that all those cherished memories um, are saved. So we used the whole look of, you know, your memories are precious, um, you know, get started, save them now, don't lose out on all your, um, on all your memories and, and lose everything. Um, and now we saw an 82% increase in downloads um, for the actual product. Um, and the second landing page that we created was a more techie look. So it was more about, you know, have a safe place for all your files, unlimited storage, automatic backup, and really kind of giving more of a uh, technical background. Um, and you can also see that we use the guy's head to kind of lean in and the computer to kind of um, navigate you towards the call to action button. Um, and this saw an 82% increase in downloads. Um, this is, I started showing you this case study um, at the beginning of the presentation. So um, it's a dating site in Singapore. And this is their original landing page, which look, actually looks very good. Um, and you can see they they were using the people to look at the call to action button. Um, and they also used a really cool testimonial on the picture to kind of show people that, you know, wow, this um, site helped me find my true love um, and stuff like that. It works. It works, yeah. And then we did um, two landing pages. So this is the first landing page that we did. Um, so you can see what we wanted to do here is maybe create a bit more of freshness and to give context. Um, so here you have people in the background, but we wanted to show how life can turn out to be. So if you use uh, this company, you would basically have a date, but not only will your life be complete because you're romantic, you'll also be on this beautiful beach and everything will be amazing and fantastic. Um, and we kind of changed the, the registration form and we added some trust icons to show people, you know, um, this is a well-known brand and we added a bit more text at the bottom to tell you that you're going to be matched up with a perfect date and we put in a lot of effort to find that person for you. And we're still using the, the girl to point towards um, the call to action button. And also the color. Blue yeah, it's it's clusters. Exactly. So we used we kept the pink for the passion and love and um, feminine, and we used the blue to create trust. Um, so this saw an eighty nine percent increase in revenues, 
Um, and the second design that we created was this design, which we discussed before. Um, so you can see that we used all the kind of um, people to kind of look at the design. And you'll also, also notice that we changed the sign-in. So before, when we looked at the design, the sign-in was open. Um, and in this variation, we closed it. So it was basically a link you could click on and open uh, the sign-in. And this saw a 304% increase in revenues. Um, which was, um, again, these are case studies, so you always show the best case studies. You always, yeah. you don't show, oh, this failed, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. sucked, um, but yeah. Um, but, but I think what you, what you can conclude from the last one is that people as models are really a big influence on other people like decision making when entering a, an interface. Yeah, people like to see themselves. People want to see, this is in Singapore, so obviously, you know, it's it. You took people that are from, that, that you know from, from Singapore, yeah, from that area, and you can see yourself if you're you know a female or a male. You in one of these pictures, you will find yourself. You're either an old guy or you're you know you're a tech guy or you're a woman or you're a businesswoman. You know, you can find yourself in so many um, in so many places in this image, and it gives you the idea that anyone can find a match, and also that there's so many people out there. So we have a ton of matches for you and we will find the right person for you. It's a big problem in Singapore and China. Yeah? Singles. Because yeah. the matching, it's... Um, it's, it's actually massive. it's actually a big thing because um, I was recently in China um, and one of the things is that your mother it has a very big influence on you. Similar to yeah. the Jews, I guess. No, but... <laughs> to to only ask child. Jews. They're only but, child. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... But uh, their only children and their parent has a very big uh, decision in who they marry and where they work. Um, so you have to actually impress the parent too yeah. when kind of choosing your mate. Yeah, it's the, uh, culture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, this is uh, Amaze, which is a fantastic company for creating presentations. Um, I don't know if you've used it before, but you really should. Uh, they have a really great platform. Daniel, Daniel Glickman. Yes, Daniel so Glickman. He gave us a lecture three months ago. Oh. Yeah, approximately. Perfect. So, yeah. so we worked with them about two years ago. This is a, this is a, a case study from about two years ago. And this was their original um, landing page slash homepage. Uh, that they had today it's actually completely different uh but it's pretty cool they have like the madman thing within <laughs> the design um yeah <laughs> and they have like the sign up and the login and and we and you know we went in we did our research um and we found again two types of customers one is the more tech savvy that wants to impress so if they've had enough of powerpoint they've been using it for so long and they're constantly creating presentations, they've had enough of it, and they really want to do something that will make them stand out. And the second um, c um, kind of audience are people who just can't figure out presentations and PowerPoint, and it's just so annoying, and how does it work, and what do we do? And you know, so it's two kind of different uh, targeted audiences. And we had a lot of traffic coming in from the same place, um, and we created two different landing pages. So this was actually for the tech guys. I you know, finally enjoy creating presentations. It's fun, it's fast, it's easy, and it's free. Um, and Minimal. Exactly, and you have this guy, and the, the arrow you can see was kind of moving, it was a GIF, so it's pointing towards, you know, put in your email, so it's giving the attention towards the sign up. Um, and 100% better than PowerPoint, and it's kind of, you know, in your face, you know? It's just, you should use us if you're tired of PowerPoint and you're, you want to find something that's fun and easy and fast, you know, you should be using Amaze. Um, and this showed 117% increase in registrations, um, which was really cool and, and really enjoyable, but we also wanted to, to work on the other audience, and we also, one of the other things we wanted to do is not just get registrations, we wanted people to create presentations. Um, so the second design that we created was this. And this was, you know, we call this, and we basically took it out from um, their logo uh, and kind of made the whole uh, peacock thing around the call to action. So this is, you know, you click on the get started, it turns into um, a, you know, your email and password. 
Um, and it, I, it's so like, oh, that's not right. It's sort of like a 300 and something uh, percent increase in uh, signups, but more in importantly, so 104 percent increase in presentations. So people were not just signing up anymore. They were also creating more presentations. And that's one of the biggest issues that, that companies have today is that you get people to take the first step, but they don't take the second and third step. Um, so by kind of creating a more emotional strat strategic approach to the landing page, we were able to increase the amount of people who create presentations. So this one was had 300% more as well? It had like 300 it had 300 more signups, but 104% more people who were creating presentations. Okay. And this actually, this landing page is still their Amazes landing page. So they've been, they've been using it for about two years now and we're, um, starting to work with them on a few new projects, but that's so far this, we haven't been able to beat this landing page. So with the right shape, you don't have to choose actually uh, models, like people as models, you can use whatever item you want, you know, whatever. whatever it's uh, part of the logo. It is part of the logo, but it's not just the logo. I mean, what matters yeah. is also the colors. So we talked about the whole red, yellow, and orange are fun, exciting, okay. amazing. So that's really good. You have a, you know, a strong call to action button and you have everything telling you, okay, make your presentation stand out. It's just gonna be easy and quick and let's just do it. Yeah, it's, not, you know? it's not a show, it's a funny thing. Exactly, and it's get started. It's not fill in all your information, let's get started. It's, you know, it's a quick and easy thing and, it, and it's been working very well till today. So it's uh, kind of cool. Um, so takeaways. Marketing is not a battle of products, it's a battle of perceptions. This is my famous uh, and most, um, you know, uh, favorite quote by Jack Trout, which maybe summarizes everything we spoke about here. So there's a lot of things that you can do in order to increase conversion and to create a good landing page. But the most important thing to remember is that it's not about other products. It's not about your features or your pricing. It's about how people perceive you and how your customers see you, how they think you will change their life. And that's probably um, the most important takeaway that you can uh, take away from here. And the other one is that reality sucks. <laughs> And the reason I put this in here is because it's up to us as marketers to sell the dream to our clients and show them that reality doesn't suck. And if you use our product or our service, life will be a little better. And um, that's kind don't of- Don't sell too high. <laughs> and don't sell too high, because you know, <laughs> Titanic doesn't always work out. Um, so yeah, that was me. Um, and as I said, you can tweet to me, um, at Talia GW and you can email me and you can also find a lot of our blog posts on our blog a lot about how to do emotional targeting and a lot about how to start with conversion optimization how to do a B testing how to build correct landing pages and test them um, so if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer them thank you very much Talia <laughs> it was a real pleasure a uh, lot to process now yeah <laughs> and to work on for sure kobe you, ha you want something to um, how about the mobile 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 conversion. mobile, mobile conversions so yes. I i'll say i'll say um something short a lot of companies today are going for responsive design i'm not a big fan of that um responsive design means that you take your screen uh, and your desktop homepage and you squeeze minimize it. it and squeeze it into this small um, device. Now, the reason I don't like it is because this is essentially saying that everyone who uses desktop uses mobile exactly the same way and I should create the same user journey for them. Um, and it's not the right thing because at the end of the day, we use the devices differently. So we use mobile differently and we use desktop differently. So you want to create a specific user journey for mobile users. And even if you do do a, a responsive design, which is good because you don't want to be getting people to pinch yeah. and stuff, which it's important, but it's not a conversion optimization strategy. If you want to get more signups or more paying customers within mobile, you have to pay attention to what your mobile users are doing on your site and where they're going to and what they're clicking on and create a user journey for them. Now, doing that is extremely expensive. Mo doing mobile, you know, right now there's, wow, everyone's hooting and yeah. kind of going insane. It's still, it's still <laughs> Perhaps it's my car, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
today you have a few options. You have two options. You have create a mobile app, which is extremely expensive, and who has money for that? Or you can create a responsive design, which is okay, but as we said, it's not really good for conversions. Um, so actually, um, there is there are a few really cool tools out there um, right now, and three tools that you can use uh, for mobile optimization. Uh, one of them is called Banana Splash. Um, I'm on their advisory board, so that's why I'm shamelessly mm -hmm. promoting them. Uh, it's okay. Um, it's a good they, course. yeah, they do some fantastic work with helping mobile landing pages. So you can basically trigger. Um, you don't have to spend a ton of money um, in designing a new experience for mobile, but you can use a quick message and a quick action-oriented message um, to mobile users. So check it out, and it's called Banana Splash. Uh, and if you have any questions, um, you know, let me know. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed like we did for sure, at least like we did. <laughs> uh, take what you can out of it. And if you have any more questions, you can approach Talia, I'm sure. Uh, see you in our next session. Thank Bye. You, Talia. Bye. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Dad.